both of them at the end out in the most extraordinary way. He tried to step over the stumps and just flicked a bail with his, with his right. He managed to try to do the splits over it, and unfortunately, uh, the inner part of his thigh must have just removed the bail. He just, just didn't quite get his leg over. Anyhow, he, he did very well indeed, batting 131 minutes and hit three fours. Aggers do stop. Uh, <laughs> And he was joined by De Freitas, who um, was in for 40 minutes. Um, Lawrence, uh, always entertaining, batted for 30, 35. 30, 35 minutes, hit a four over the week keepers. Beggars, <laughs> for goodness sake, stop it. Hit a four. Yes, Lawrence, <laughs> Lawrence played extremely <laughs> well. <laughs> he hit a four over the wingkeeper's head, and he was out for nine. Tough looking. That in 12 minutes, and then was caught by Haynes on pants number two, and there were 54 extras, and he them all out for 419. I've stopped laughing now. Ah, in fact, I do have a press release. I thought it might come in today. 182 for six from the ICC. I do love a good press release, Geoffrey. Mm. <laughs> so hopefully, this is the one we've been waiting for. Let's see. Let's watch Anderson bowl first of all, though. Wheeling round with the pavilion behind him. Four slips, and Anderson's on his way. Dipping his head. Here he comes now. Bowls to Morris. Oh, he's beaten. What a lovely ball that was. Mm. And it's taken by the keeper to end the over. Right, here we go. Ah, it's not what... That's not what I was thinking. This is a statistical, I'm not very good at these, press release. Further to the recent request from the South African government, the ICC has now considered the question of downgrading the status of all statistics, including runs and wickets from the series played between England and the rest of the world in 1970. The ICC agrees, it's quite interesting, but agrees that the series has played against the spirit of the Den Eagles agreement and that in the interests of keeping cricket free from political interference, bit of a mouthful, all matches will be removed from first class records. That's ridiculous. David Richardson, chief executive, says clearly this will not prove popular with those cricketers whose records will now be amended, but we're looking at the bigger picture. This is quite serious, isn't it? Let's watch um, Roland Jones. In the sunshine, past the umpire, in he goes, bowls, that's turned away out towards mid wicket. A couple here for Elga. No, in fact, he only gets one. Uh, Peter Hain, who was on the programme recently, the long time anti apartheid campaigner, has hailed it as a great day for cricket <laughs> and humanity. <laughs> I'm sure the players involved will take it on the chin. For more details, contact me. Well, I, wasn't, I was not expecting that. That's a loaded Andrew, stripe. What are you going to do with that? Well, that's that, first, what does that mean? That's the first time I've heard of that, that's for sure. These, they're not, they, that. Weren't, they weren't test matches, were they, those guys? Well, yeah, they, they were played as test matches at the time, but were subsequently ruled not long after that as not being test matches. Well, they were ruled in as test matches for test yes. match statistics for a, I don't know how many, a couple of three years or something. In goes Roland Jones, and he bowls. That's clipped away off an inside edge. There's runs here, probably four of them. Yes, there is. Down to the boundary. Then so, they were taken out. Then they were taken out. That's That's right. Right. And I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Be, but then, when Australia played as world champions, the rest of the world, and the ICC picked the team for the rest of the world, they included That's them the as test, test matches because yeah. they were getting lots of money from sponsors. Now, it's either all in or all out. Yeah. I have no problem with being out because there weren't two test teams, you know, two sure. nations. But, but this is this is they're taking away first class status from this. Crazy. Things. That's ridiculous. So what that is, is it? ridiculous. So yeah. who what happens with that then? Well, we'll who, have to who, change who? the database, won't be, but it's you know, they do they are ridiculous the way they change yeah. these things all the time. In goes Roland Jones, and that's uh, prodded away into the offside. Politics, isn't it? Yeah. How many games how many games were there? I can't remember. Five five. Five. Five, yeah. It's politics to interfere with it. Mm. And because they're talking about politics taking them out. Yeah. But if I mean it's nonsense, isn't it? Who played? Who played? Uh, Alan Jones opened the batting. Alan Jones, of course, he got the pair. Did he open with you? you, you no, played? I didn't play till the fourth test. I played the fourth and fifth. Right. And I wasn't too. Uh, so they don't count as well. first-class matches anymore. <laughs> well, that's silly, isn't it? First-class umpires, first-class players. Some of the best players in the world were playing. So that rest of the world side is yeah. a fantastic team. Then goes Roland Jones, and uh, that's pushed away by Morris. And it's all you do with me personally, but just to say it's not first class, yeah. it's nonsense, isn't it?
after all those records was, well, have been. Was great players, as, as Jeffrey saying, Sobers, Sobers and Pollock had one particular partnership. You can look at on oh, YouTube. Fabulous. Sobers and Pollock betting together. Can you imagine fabulous. that? Fabulous. So those those hundreds won't count. Oh, that's ridiculous. It really is. I mean, and there was Eddie Barlow got four wickets and five balls. All sorts of things happened in that series. I mean, they're not first class. I mean, I have no problem in no test matches. Uh, no. But the other one in Australia, Australia versus rest of the world, should not be test matches then. But they kept it because they picked the side. Here's Roland Jones, and that's driven nicely down to mid on. And there's no it's, run. It's so, an anomaly, isn't it? You know, it's either all in or all out. Yeah. You know, but they just picked I mean, so to be clear, does that mean that these are now retrospectively scrubbed? So all these stats from those matches now will be gone. Yeah, will well, be gone. I mean, I suppose and so we'll, it's backdated. Yeah, we'll have to take them out. I suppose we'll. I suppose we'll have to see what the Association of Cricket Statisticians and people like that say as well. Well, they should say no. We're not going to. It'll be. It'll be another little argument, won't it? Yeah. Hmm. But if they're backdated, then. Yep. Everything subsequent to that is also sort of goes down by one, as it were. Or it may be. Here's Roland Jones on off stump, and uh, has pushed away out to it, point. It would be actually, Jeffrey. Yeah. You got a hundred in that series, didn't you? There. Uh, the last match here at the Oval. I only played two tests, though. So. so there'd be a bit of a problem there if that's taken out. Because, Not really. Well, it, it wasn't a test match hundred anyhow, because it, it was it was a test match, but then it was taken out by the ICC, so it never was a test yeah. match. But I think I see what what Daggers is alluding to here, because your hundred hundred would now become your 99th hundred. Well, isn't it ridiculous? No, I mean, that's completely ridiculous. You're right. You're right to him, he's an idiot for putting that out. I, I mean, and he just, you, he's, that is politics alone because you've got a, a black government in South Africa asking them because of politics to take it out. And cricket should say, hey, they're saying we're not getting involved in politics. Wow. And that's what they should be saying, shouldn't they? This is all, this not is, Peter Hayne and the South is, African this government. Is, this is remarkable. 187 for six. So that, so like Jeffrey's instance then. <laughs> exactly. So like, well, the others, there might be others who've got yeah. hundred hundreds and other records that you'll have to. But yours was at Headingley. It was special. It was, of course, it was. You knocked out all those plates, commemorative <laughs> plates. Here's Roland Jones, <laughs> I didn't Anderson knock bowling them out. outside the off stump, and there's no. But there were, there all were those commemorative knocked things. out, as you said. Oh, I mean, no. that's how daft it is, isn't it? But does it matter? Where, well, where, 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 well, hang on. Say this is real, then, Andrew. Where was? Which one was Jeffrey Boycott's proper, authentic, hundred hundred? Well, the one after that. Where was that? Timbuktu. <laughs> I said probably Timbuktu. Nobody knows. In comes Anderson, running in hard, bowls, that's pushed away into the offside. Oh, we sent back there. Sent back and Moen comes into field. Mm. Well, this is extraordinary. I, I think that was... Samuel 11th, of August, 11th of August 1977, so famous. In that, was the hundred, that was the 100th. That would have been, wait. So where did you're, Jeffrey you're Boycott really get his 100th 100, 100 then? Your next 100. You're not going to like this. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not bothered. Was, um, I just you, think it's daft. United Bank Limited on a tour match. It, it Faisal bat on the Pakistan. Oh, yes, they got one in Faisal bat, yeah. Wonderful. Well, that's your 100th 100. Well, in comes Anderson, bowls outside your stump. And Every Elga lets it go down. Well, a much better place, isn't it, Faisal Bala, and to get your 100th 100? What's ah. what, what about all these plates and caps and bats that you've signed and... I haven't what signed What are you going to do? Muppet. But uh, nothing. I just think it's wrong for everybody, that. It's just silly, isn't it? It's politics. It's, it's politics. No, it's a great day for cricket and humanity. I'm sure the players involved will take it on the chin. That's one of the quotes. Yeah. Well done. See what lot people say. Wow. In comes Anderson, bowls, that's pushed uh, down towards mid-off. And hang on, they're being serious a minute, because there's, what, what date was Jeffrey's 100th 100? 11th of August, 77. 11th of August, 77, that's right, yep. So that's coming up. We've, uh, we haven't got anything planned for that, have we? We're not doing anything special, are we? We are, actually. We have, have to can it. We're having a do at our house, 180 people. We're raising money for the Yorkshire Air Ambulance. We're going to cancel it. We're not cancelling it. It's all sold and done. Oh. I'll put it this way. Samuel Hassan and mm, here comes Anderson and bowls outside the off stump. Will not get an invite. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. But you can't celebrate your 99th. And hundred. Dave Richardson, the chief executive, I love you, Dave, but you won't be getting one either. But you can't celebrate your 99th hundred. No, we're celebrating it because it's nonsense. That's it. Just silly. There'll be other people as well. I know. After you know, the words. There's a two or three after me got a hundred hundreds in there. I mean, theirs will be. I mean, you yeah. can't go changing history just like that for politics. It's for politics. Here's Anderson outside the off stump. 
and uh, there's no stroke from Dean uh, Elgar. Well, because actually you invited me to that dinner, but, I did. but you invited me under false pretenses. But the, way, the way you're carrying on now, you're definitely not getting an invite. Well, you've already invited me, but it's not... Well, I'm taking it back. It's, it's under false pretenses. It wasn't well, at the time. I, be, I, wasn't, I was not expecting that. I mean, that, that's going to well, he really gave you something to talk that's about. A, it's a mess, isn't it? I mean, it's a mess, yeah. isn't it? It's an absolute mess. Mm. Well said, Andrew. Yeah. It's also a complete wind-up, Geoffrey. And after <laughs> thoughts from you, that's going to be to me. Is that right? <laughs> you muppet. You. It's never. <laughs> Is that wind-up? You muppet, Agnew. I'll get you for that. <laughs> you. Well, you've done me a few times, but that's the biggest one. You c Oh, he's enjoying that at the back. I'm keeping this. I hope my rates shall be listening to this. She'll be laughing. You've done me easy, haven't you? Like a kipper. It's not difficult, Jeffrey. Not difficult, he says. It's a good letterhead, actually, after Get off me, I don't want any more about that. It's a good letterhead. International Cricket Council, Samuel Hassan. <laughs> Broad's getting ready to have a bowl. They're not going to take his record. Never away. mind, Broad. I'm just still reeling from this. If you want to take, Andrew, a, moment, you you want take a moment that? to compose yourself, Geoffrey, that's fine. Broad is in, and Morris plays a nice back drive to extra cover. There's no run. I haven't actually seen this, Jeffrey. Not oh, come it. on, share it, Jeffrey. Not having it. So uh, they'll definitely have a knock. Now, what's going on? Is that drinks already? What's happened? Aren't they having drinks now? Well, I'll tell you what, first of all, let our Radio 4 long wave listeners hope you're braced there in the studio. It's coming slightly earlier than expected, halfway through and over. But uh, it's time for your shipping forecast. What's happened there? That's halfway through and over, and everyone's running on. Are they changing the ball or something? What's the fourth umpire doing coming? He's bringing a drink out. What's going on? I don't know. The more stoppages than baseball. I don't they? understand this. Uh, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was two balls into the over, wasn't it? <laughs> they all came running on. Uh, Great, even the ground staff are out there. It may be that Peterson's doing something to his bat. He's got his back to us. And whether something's happened to that. <laughs> I'll tell you what he's doing, Geoffrey. Yeah, he's putting right. a new rubber on his bat. <laughs> a new rubber in the middle of the game. He is. Well, he's taken one off first, or he's putting a new one on, but uh, he's doing it quite professionally. They, they, it's, it's never terribly easy doing that. You've got to make sure you've got no floppy stuff on the end. You've got to get it, get it all on. Roll it down that big stick. That's what's going on. I think I think Peterson has said to the umpire, I've got a problem here, I need a new bat rubber. And uh, he's put it on himself. Although he's told, actually, the young the youngster who brought it out, well, they'll give it to just finish it off. And uh, so they've called drinks. All, all very odd. Michael Vaughan, how Hello, are you? John, how are you? In your own self-embossed shirts. Mm. Are those England shirts? Is that why you've got your name on them? I, I have a, a guy that makes my shirts. Right. And he just puts them on. Put the MPV 600 on them. On the why 600? I test them. You 600 with? Ah. What number are you? I handed I can't remember. Did you ever get... 508 or something. Did you ever get a, a cap with your number on the back? No, and I wish I had. I'm sure the ECB were, were making sure that all ex-players got one of those. No. You want, you want to check that again? I got a tie with my number on. Well, maybe it was just ties. But what yeah. about your debut? Did you get a, a cap with your... No, the nothing like that. So it, we, it was all hardy, though. We never got all this namby-pamby stuff. We got nice, a, Jonathan. We got a no, brown she... paper bag and it had to sit there. You weren't allowed to touch it until you were officially told that you were playing. But just look just, just look back for you, you, you know, your family in the future. If you had a cap with the the stitching of your debut, that yeah, the way you play, because there isn't no, that much footage of you, nice. is there? It'd be lovely and well known. There isn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, there isn't. Um, and I'll happily take that on the chin, Michael. But what we have got, and Tuffers will have one as well, is a proper old cap. The proper yes. old England cap. Not one of those nasty baseball ones. Proper cap with a proper raised three lions and the crown on there. I have one of those. Beautiful, beautifully made. Yeah, a real proper, and the blazer. Blazer doesn't fit anymore, but uh, yeah, it's lovely. So, well, that was a, an impromptu drinks break, which taken everyone by surprise. Happily not our 
our uh, shipping forecast reader, who I'm sure she's still going well. In fact, she's just about to finish now. She's going to hand back to us. Thank you, Rush, indeed. Welcome back to our Radio 4 Longwave listeners. You haven't missed anything apart from the excitement of an impromptu drinks break, which we think was brought about because Kevin Peterson needed a new bat rubber on his handle. Uh, and as we know, all amateurs will know, it's not easy to do that. You've got to roll it on down the stick and make sure that it's all in, in place and uh, no floppy stuff on the end of the handle or anything like that. He can't have that, so he's, it's, it's a bit of a procedure. And uh, I thought he did it very well, actually. Michael, Vaughan's beside me. It's, it's not easy putting a rubber on, is it? No, it's not. I was never good at that. 2 10 for 2. In comes Fernando. Bowls, and that's uh, turned away to backward square leg. And they'll come back for 2. <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> Shall we move on? <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> Hello, Henry. <laughs> He's played well, KP, <clears throat> hasn't he? He has played well. Now he's got a new rubber on, he's, he might play even better. He's all right, he's going to play some shots, I think, now. So, warmer, 6, not 11. England, 3.99 for 6, 3.99 for 6. Uh, there's some signals going on to the, to the dressing room. Warmer is running in, lots of people are running out. Ole is bringing Warmer what? Glass of water. Unusual, isn't it? And, <laughs> and a freaker. Oh, a freaker. They've got a freaker down the wicket now, not very shapely, and it's masculine. And I would think it's seen the last of its cricket for the day. <laughs> the, the police are mustered, so are the cameramen, and Greg Chappell. And now oh, he's had his load, he's being embraced by a blonde policeman. And this may be his last public appearance, but what a splendid one, and so warm. Many, of course, have done this on cold rugby grounds, but this chap has done it before 25,000 people on a day when he doesn't even feel cold, and he's now being marched down in the final exhibition, past at least 8,000 people in the man stand, some of whom, perhaps, have never seen anything quite like this before. And he's getting a very good reception. And at least he's being escorted off by an inspector and no play will be restarted until he's gone. Fine performance, but what will they do about finding his swimming trunks? Blowers has returned. There's a full page. I know. Of blowers in, in the fashion the fashion area of one of today's <laughs> more respectable, if that's the right word to use, newspapers. And he's there, and splendid he looks, 35 for three. Here's Pattinson, bowling on the leg stump, hits Bresden on the pad. And uh, it's fielded at square leg by Rogers. I think it's the it times. And there's no run, well, it's, it's, it's a broadsheet. And here it is, look at this. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's the Telegraph weekend. A male model. He is, <laughs> he is a male model. Cricket buff and bon viveur Henry Blofeld knows a thing or two about sartorial finery, oh. is how the article starts. And here are his favourites. 35 for three. In goes Pattinson, bowls outside the off stump. Just a little hint of swing away from Bresnan. So there we go. What's he wearing? Well, see, actually for Henry, I mean, the, the picture of Blowers, oh, he's, he's the old, there's, there's a younger model there alongside Henry. That's, I don't think that was Henry. Uh, you know, sort of 40 years ago, <laughs> but uh, Henry, that for his standards, is quite conservatively yeah. dressed, isn't he? Yeah. Hands thrust casually into the pockets of his trousers, Got jacket, a cravat. Got, well, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he has a cravat. They're making a comeback, I've been told. Yeah, but uh, no, he's just elegantly cash. I'd say there is Henry, and goes Pattinson bowls, very full, and squeezed away out to mid off by uh, Bresnan. Um, now, his article, he's, he's written a sort, it's a sort of a letter, open letter right. to, the, to, to the readers. It starts, okay. yeah. uh, perhaps not necessarily surprisingly, My dear old things. Oh. My dear old things, I've never been one to rattle on about sartorial elegance. I simply like to lead by example. <laughs> 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 and it goes downhill from there, frankly. <laughs> Being a modest chap, I don't want to go over the top. 
goes patted sort of bowls on the middle off, and that's played away uh, into the onside. But it was drummed into me when I was young that it's not quite the done thing to be too conscious of your appearance. Ah, just let it hatch. Ha- ha- Nonetheless, <laughs> you mustn't let the side down when you're on parade. Oh, of course. And there you go. He never lets the side down. No. So there we go. A dashing sock always catches the eye. <laughs> but the most important thing is to come up with clothes that are comfortable to wear. Yeah. The trick is buy the best, and then the clothes speak for themselves. Wow. Good stuff. 35 for three. And this is the in-swinger this time. Breslin plays it well out, out towards uh, mid-on. And, uh, and there's no wicket. This is lovely stuff. I mean, it is. I mean, I mean, Blowers is a very fine dresser. He says, it simply doesn't do to look like a tailor's dummy with everything symmetrically in place. <laughs> that explains maybe the odd problem with the flies that we've had. <laughs> Take a handkerchief, for example. I just flick my silk handkerchief open. I tuck it into my top pocket, where I think it does the job with something approaching a plum. <laughs> that's as a plum, as in looking like a plum, but I mean, yeah. sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Ties are off the menu these days. I think a decently tied silk cravat lends a touch of class. Oh, it does. And bridges this gap pretty well. Yeah. In comes Siddle. Bowls, and that's tucked away by a root down to fine leg, and they take a single. It's lovely stuff. Dear old blowers, you can see the article and what blowers is wearing today on the Test Match Special Facebook page or via BBC TMS on Twitter. Well, there the, you go. The well, George, blowers. The George Armani of the uh, com box. He is. <laughs> he is. It's lovely, isn't it? There's nothing that we seem to talk about more than people's clothes up here. It's obvious. No. I mean, we've got wonderful cricket to watch. But uh, he is, he's, I think, I think someone from your part of the world might call him a Bobby Dazzler. Bobby is Dazzler. You, is that what you call oh, him? Oh, yes. 36 for three. Bresnan still looking for his first run. Siddle comes pounding in, bowls to him. That's pushed away to Gully's right hand, a diving, scrambling stop. It's written in by emails. And this is a sample question. It's an interesting one, Jeff, because it applies to you. This is from Fred Boy- Boycott in Putsy. No, it's Fred Boycott now, on some, using my name on some internet, the Twitter <laughs> is. In test matches, Jeff Boycott, no relation, specialist batsman, has a better bowling average than Jonathan Agnew. Absolutely, I was a better specialist bowler. Specialist bowler. Can you offer, and the U is not specific, it replies to either Jeffrey or to Jonathan, can you offer any explanation for this apparent anomaly? Asks yes. Fred. Yes, Jeffrey Boycott was a better bowler. Okay. He swung the ball, you know, and Jonathan was just a seamer, straight up and down with a little bit of movement off the seam. He never really swung the ball. So swing was the key. Swing was the key. To and your the other thing, Fred, over the other thing, he should have bowled with a cap on. He'd have got it to swing more. <laughs> that's his problem. He just bowled with that mop of air all over the place. Yeah. Well, Jeff, I think that's really got the ball rolling for him. And can I tell you some other things? He yeah. keeps saying he bowled me out in first-class cricket. Well, I've had it checked by our scorer. He got me out in a county championship once. 26th of June, 1985, at Bradford Court. I butcher, bowled Agnew four. And he got me out in that famous Bench and Edges Cup match at Headingley. 5th of May, 1984. Caught Hazeman, bowled Agnew six. And I got zillions of hundreds against Leicester when he was playing. And you were 45 years old. By then. I was, I was past my best. If I got him when I was younger, I'd have walloped him. <laughs> I dispute those figures. I'm going to go and I'm check them. <laughs> well, I think And I'm off for my lunch you now after that. Ask Aggers is off to a cracking start. Uh, we weren't expecting it to be completely hijacked by Jeffrey, but <laughs> we'll try and get some questions in now. For I've got a lovely message first of all. How's this? Just picture the scene. This is from Robin Setti. He says, What a sad Saturday night. Wife watching sad movie. Me watching cricket. Both of us crying. You can picture the scene, can't you, in the, in the SETI household. <laughs> oh, cheer up, everybody. It's only a game, isn't it? Well, I guess before I'm, I... I'm nervous about this. Well, I'm nervous too. Are I'm, you? I'm interrogating you. I mean, oh. this is an absolutely hand grenade of a job for me to be asking <laughs> Agus questions. Well, just... A lot of people in the back <laughs> of the box here. I know. I've never seen them all grinning, goodness me. They're making me feel rather important for 35 seconds. Everyone has said to me, what should I do as a last word? I've got no last word because handing over to the next commentary, commentator, has always been an adventure for me. As Chase bowls again, though it's a lovely looking drive and it's gone through for four runs. That really was a pearler of a stroke to end. If that was the last uh, shot I described, it was a pretty good one. Wesley 
driving a chase through the covers for four. Beautiful stroke. Takes him to 27. Total 87 for one. The unlucky number in some parts of the world. 13 short of 100. Goodness me. And uh, tough as one more ball to go. Yes, uh, is this going to be my last ball? I say it's exciting. Doing something dramatic is going to happen. Hello, Chase is coming <laughs> in now after the wicked E bowls. Oh, and it's a sweep. Yes, but it's... And it's, it's Daryl Gabriel. Oh, it had to be Gabriel, didn't it? How marvellous. One run. One run to Wesley. He's 28. It's 88 for one. Uh, Stoneman is 37. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of it. Thank you all for listening. It's been wonderful talking to you. You all say you're going to miss me. I tell you what, I'm going to miss you. Something dreadful. Now, I must try not fall over when I hand over to the next commentator, who is, I think, going to be Ed Smith. How lovely. What well up, Blowers? What well up, mate? Well done, Governor. Oh dear. There goes the legend. <laughs> and he, did, he got the earphones caught in the binoculars. <laughs> well done, mate. This shoe in goes for Wesley, who defends. And thanks from all of us. To Henry Blofeld. <laughs> oh dear. The governor. This year again, <laughs> Wesley once more defending, allowing a calm in the middle. To, oh dear, oh dear. Not to detract from Henry's farewell. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, well, well. 